boys and girls, don't forget to remember assembly. Let's sing this lovely song. Did you know creation is talking to you? Wherever you go and whatever you do, the earth will keep giving you clue after clue. So you won't forget to remember what's true. Sing the words. Like every day when the sun rises high, the warmth that you feel is God's love by your side. Oh, and just like the birds who keep humming their tune, remember God sings songs of joy over you.
along. Remember, he's always by your side. He never leaves his people. So we're going to shine from the inside out. Ready?
thing today we showed you so many of the wonderful uh, children all over the country playing so many musical instruments wonderful we have another competition coming up on monday a very interesting one and i almost guarantee nobody would ever ever work out what the competition is <laughs> if you do that's a challenge but you'll have to wait and find out now uh, today we're going to talk about another little girl. For the next few weeks we're going to be talking about children in the Bible. And Sunday we're talking about young people uh, whose families were affected. But today we're going to be talking about a little girl. Now remember everywhere the Lord Jesus went, the children were all around him. They absolutely loved him. And on this occasion, when Jesus was walking through the streets, walking through the villages, walking through the town, he came to uh, this town, this place, and a religious leader suddenly came right up to Jesus and he got down on his knees and he said, Good master, please come and help me. And whenever Jesus saw this man was called Jarius, all the people thought, He's a religious man. Why is he asking Jesus for help? He should know everything about God. And not only that, he's got down on his knees. That's embarrassing. But you see, Jarius had a daughter, and the closest person to this man's life was his little child. So he did not care what people thought. And boys and girls, many people today, they're embarrassed to come to Jesus. They're embarrassed to being a Christian. And because of what people might think or what people might say, but remember this, if you are ashamed of being a Christian, or embarrassed about becoming a Christian. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, I too am ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. So remember, boys and girls, think about that. Because if you want to be a Christian, you've got to be a bold Christian. And you've got to let everyone know around you that you do belong to Jesus. So Jarius, he didn't care what other people thought. Because he knew the only person who could help him was Jesus. And the Lord Jesus said, Jarius, what's wrong? What, why, why the emergency? Of course Jesus knew what was wrong. But he asked him the question. And he said, Lord, you must come because my little daughter, she's 12 years of age, she's at the point of death. She's going to die. And I know you're the only one who can help her and heal her. And he said, I'll spend all my money on doctors and medicine and nobody can heal my child. And Jarius saw the urgency Jesus saw the urgency in Jarius' face and he said, Jarius, take me to your home right away, immediately. And off they went and they began to walk and they're walking through all different crowds of people as they walk. And suddenly in their crowd, there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and she had also spent all the money in medicine and doctors. Nobody can help her, nobody can heal her. And she saw Jesus. And she thought, if I could just touch the hem of his garment or the back of his coat. And she goes right up to Jesus and she touched his coat. And suddenly her bleeding stopped. But Jesus also stopped talking, walking. And he said, who touched me? And the disciples said, Lord, what do you mean who touched you? You're walking through crowds of people. Everyone's rubbing shoulders with you. He said, someone has deliberately touched me. How do you know that? He says, because healing power Virtue has gone out of me. And suddenly the woman was afraid and she came up and she said, Lord, it was me. I'm sorry, it was me. Jesus, he didn't tell her off. He didn't shout at her. No, he just looked at her and he said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. And boys and girls, there's something important here. It wasn't because she touched Jesus. It was because she had the faith to come to Jesus. Likewise, boys and girls, we don't see, these are just pictures to illustrate the story, but to come to Jesus, we don't physically see him. It takes faith. We just trust, just like there's air in the room, just like when you sit in a chair, you never think, is this chair going to hold me? You just sit on it. And that's what it means to be a Christian. You just believe what the Bible says is true. You believe you've got sin, you ask him to forgive you. And this woman was desperate. She was sick. She needed to be healed. And she believed if she came to Jesus. And Jesus, by his words, said, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. Then somebody shouted, Jarius! Jarius! Don't bother Jesus anymore! Why not? He said, because it's too late. Your little girl, she's gone. She's passed away. She's just died. Boys and girls, you can imagine Jarius with the tears coming into his eyes. And Jesus looks at Jarius 
And he says these two words. Only believe. And boys and girls, those words, they meant so much to Jairus. And the Lord says, Jesus, the Lord Jesus said, Jairus, we must go to your home. And he still wanted to go to the home. And whenever they got close to the home, everyone had gathered because people there would come and they would mourn over the child naturally. Whenever a child dies in an area or a community, it causes a, a people are very upset naturally because the death is unnatural and premature. But it does happen. Children all over the world, all over the country, very often they die when they're young. And that's why, boys and girls, it's so important when you're young at primary school to make sure you've got Jesus in your life and your heart so that you're prepared to be with him forever. And everyone's mourning and crying. And Jesus said, why are you crying? And he said, because the little girl's dead. If you would have come sooner, she might have lived, almost telling Jesus off. And he said, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And everyone began to laugh and mock Jesus as if he didn't know any better. And when he got to the home, he said, Could everyone please come out of the home? Apart from the father and the mother and two disciples. And he walked into the home and there was a little girl. She had passed away. There was no life in her. Little 12 year old girl, her life was gone. Humanly speaking, that was the end of the child. But you see, with God, nothing is impossible. And the Lord Jesus sat beside the little girl and he took her by the hand and he said, Damsel, or little girl, wake up. And the moment Jesus said those words, something happened. Jesus said, little girl, wake up. And the moment he said that, she woke up and she sat up. And you know what she said? She said, Mommy, I'm hungry. Because Jesus instructed the mother, go and get your daughter some food. If that was a miracle, that doesn't normally happen. But you see, the Lord Jesus is illustrating the point. He came to give us life. See, but with Jesus, we've got life. Without the Lord Jesus, children, we don't have life. Everlasting life, life with God. And he comes and he gives us spiritual life because he takes away the sin and he comes and lives within forever and ever. And not only did he, he brought the meek girl back to life, she was hungry. And when a person becomes a Christian, they'll get hungry. Not for physical food, for spiritual food, not for physical bread, but for the bread of life. Jesus, and he will, you'll want to read about him, to pray to him, to sing about him, and to grow having Jesus within your heart and within your life. And what a change Jesus made since he came into that home. So Jairus, he didn't care about being embarrassed. He knew the only one could help him was the Lord Jesus. The only one could save his daughter, his child, was Jesus. And boys and girls, he's the only one who could save me, and he did, and he's the only one who can save you today. A lovely story about a 12-year-old girl, and the, all the difference that made was when Jesus came in at home, and he spoke, and he said, little child, little child, little girl, wake up. See, when God speaks through his word, we listen, and we respond, and we wake up. Wonderful story about a 12-year-old girl. Ready for a quiz? Yes, we've got a quiz for you today. Books of the Bible, not so many questions, just a few. Okay, what have we got here? Books of the Bible, six questions each. Who's going to win today? Right, pick a book of the Bible to win your points. Uh, girls, who was the, the story about today? Mainly about a little girl or a little boy. Yes, a little girl. Who do you want? Uh, Genesis, okay. Ooh, what's it going to be? Oh, good start, girls. Boys, how old was the little 12 year old girl? How old was she? Did I just say the age? Okay, how old? 12! Ah, thought you were going to say 13. No, 12. Yes, James. <laughs> Boom! Ha! 250. Catch up with girls. Yoo! Girls, uh, the Lord Jesus, what did he call uh, the man who came running? Whenever Jarius came running to Jesus, he got down on his knees. What was his name? Did I just say? Yes, James. No, not James. Jarius. Well done, John. Okay, good girls. You need about five hundred, one fifty. That's not bad, uh, boys. Um, the Lord Jesus went into the little, going to the house. Why? Did, why was the people mocking and laughing at Jesus? Yes, because finish the sentence. Yes, because. 
he said she wasn't dead, she was sleeping. Because he knew he was going to bring her back to life. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Yes? Matthew. Oi, right, Matthew, here we go. 200. Okay, so 450 to the boys and 250 to the girls. Ha! Guess who's getting the weekend off school? The winner today. Girls, somebody wanted to be a Christian. What must they do? Believe in the Lord Jesus and ask him to take away their sin to forgive them. Look or mark? Mark or look? Look. Okay. Well, the list of boys get a minus. It looks like they're getting their feet up over the weekend. Winners can get an ice cream at home, by the way. Boys, who can tell me? Jarius, uh, there's a woman who came with an issue of blood. How long had she been bleeding for in the story? How many years? Twelve. Right, boys? All you need is a plus number. And it is 300! That's a record. 750 against 300. Boys, I'm just sharing something with you. I'm so excited about the boys winning. I'm going to get everyone the weekend off without doing a worksheet. Because I'm so excited about that. Okay, so get a good rest. We're back on Sunday at 10.30. And then, don't forget... We are going to have a special competition. Nobody, I reckon, knows what that competition is. You'll find out on Monday. Okay? So, uh, we're going to so we'll sing a song. Or just hold on, hold. So let's finish our assembly today by singing Praise Him, Praise Him. Another song from the song. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. and the winners for the musical okay some beautiful uh, pr uh, entries from all over the country again you can see lovely detail on the color uh, different ages different stages and we're going to be calling out uh, well the family goes how many years has Tullymore Tullymore is the annual camp we do every year and this year will be or would have been the 15th year it's on hold to see if we're able to go and do the camps we're going to wait till the 1st of July before we call it all right, um, I'm really enjoying your assemblies. I enjoy learning the stories each day. And somebody says, I love your assemblies. I love all your funny jokes. Haven't told any jokes. Um, what else have we got there? Yes, another lovely one. Do you play any musical instruments? No, I can't sing, I can hum, I can play the, do I play the guitar. I used to play the drums. I should show the photograph when I was a band. Do you want to see it? <laughs> Don't have it with me but I could get it I used to play the drum in a band many many moons ago okay and um, do you know why the devil sinned yes well the bible teaches us the angels in heaven and the leaders of all those angels called Lucifer a very beautiful created angel it was it began to get jealous of God's authority and God's power and it wanted to be like God as if it wanted to replace God that be, that was impossible so God cast that angel and a third of angels followed him and were also thrown out of heaven. So that's why the devil, because of jealous, because of jealousy, it was jealous of God. And that's why sin commences. The devil hates God and that's why he's the, the God of this world and he will do anything to keep you away from God. So remember that. That's why it's important to sing these songs about praising God and the focus on creation and all the handiwork of God. Wonderful. 
By the Rush Team winners, Aaron uh, 11, Lennox is 9, Rebecca is 8, Jessica is 8, Harry uh, is 9, Eva is 11, Ellie is 12, Emilia is 7, Lily is 5, and Sophia is 6. And then the musical winners, we're not sure if these are the parents or the children, but either way, every one of you will be notified the worksheet winners from the musical. Christina Morris, Lindsay Farrell, Jane Lennox, Pamela McLean, Lindsay Hanna, Lydia Moore, uh, Hester Adara, Sylvia Wilson, Christine Aiken, Sandra Homer, uh, Horner, sorry, and Ewell Malcolmson. All right, so lots of winners. We'll be 20 again tonight today. So I'll be notifying you to give me your address and we'll post them up to you, okay? Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for another wonderful assembly of singing songs, praising the name of Jesus. For the little story of the little girl who was die who died and yet Jesus brought her back to life again and there's life in Jesus today. Bless all the children, bless all the parents too, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sunday, 10.30, boom! Yeah, yeah, yeah.